Greetings fellow ukuleleans, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new ukulele tutorial. This one's derived from my book. I came out with a book recently and it's called Terrega 16 Right Hand Arpeggio Studies for Ukulele. I took these studies and shrunk them down to ukulele um, because guitar has six strings, ukulele four. And then um, not only did I adapt them to the ukulele, but I created a whole series of chord progressions that one might uh, be able to use. Uh, or you can use your own chord progressions, but you can borrow some of mine. And one of the ones I just did, I'll show you real quick, and then we'll get into the pattern here. It is a G minor chord. That's the main chord. That's the key that I'm in. G minor is 0, 2, 3, 1. There is the chord I started on, which was C minor. That's basically a G minor chord moved up to the 6th fret. Take a G minor chord, slide it on up there to the 6th fret, and what do you get? C minor. Really nice C minor, the way that rings on the ukulele. Um, I did a G minor chord that was back here. This is a G minor that goes 0, 7, 6, 5. This is a beautiful inversion of a G minor. There's the G minor we started with. And now our inversion. So there are lots of ways to play these chords on the ukulele. It's totally up to you uh, how many versions you think are appropriate for you to know. But I, I feel like any proficient ukulele player should have at least two uh, versions of every chord that they play. And uh, the more proficient ones that you see uh, moving all over the place, three or even four. Um, there are certain pieces of music that require us to have uh, many, many of these uh, down. Just watch a really great ukulele player, uh, Andy Eastwood, being a perfect example. He recently uh, came out with a video of him playing Sheik of Araby on the uh, banjolele. And uh, obviously he's all over the place. His uh, chord inversions are quick moving and uh, uh, virtuosic. He's, you know, one of the best in the world. But the way that, uh, you know, he shows off all those inversions of, of the chords that he knows, that, that gives you an idea of the extreme end of it. But for us, if we have two of every chord that we, we play, uh, that would be pretty respectable. That would be a really good amount to know. So yeah, G minor um, way up here. G minor down here. C minor up here. C minor back here. Notice how none of these require um, covering all four strings with a bar. The worst one was this C minor where I covered three strings with a bar. I covered the C, the E, and the A strings at the third fret, but I left my G string open. So every single one of these has um, the possibility of having an open G, which is nice. There's one exception, and that's the D chord that I used in my example. D, I didn't play the G chord, uh, G string. We're not even uh, using the G string in this particular um, study. This is, by the way, the study I opened up with in the example there. That was study eight. But I would like to talk really briefly about studies uh, six and seven, too. But let's get into eight. So we had, again, uh, let's review our C minor chord. We had our G minor chord. I did a D, seven, uh, D chord. You could do D7, but in this case I did D. And that is X, six, five, five. X being that you don't want to play the G string. Just these three. And then I did our standard issue G minor back here, 0, 2, 3, 1. Uh, here's the pattern. We pluck the C and E strings together at the same time with our thumb and index. We pluck our A string open with our, well, in this case, open. All these strings are open in this uh, raw example. With our middle. And then the E string with our index. So it goes thumb and index, middle, index. That's the first half. The second half is thumb and middle on the C and A strings. Index takes care of the E string. And middle takes care of the A string. So it goes like this. It's kind of a natural arpeggio pattern. It's not one of the awkward ones. There are ones in this book that um, are most definitely awkward. And they're kind of backwards to the way that... Uh, we normally would play. They're kind of counterintuitive and they take a lot of getting used to. But this one kind of flows somewhat naturally. You can hear there's nothing really unusual about that and the ease 
uh, in which my fingers are able to play these notes is, um, you know, not like some of the others that I'll, I'll uh, show you later. that are much harder and they're all backwards and weird and they take a while to get used to. You'll probably experience that. So anyway, I just really took that pattern from the Terega Studies and I um, kind of transcribed it for ukulele and adapted it to the smaller instrument. And then I added chords. So that's where we got this. So it's somewhat original, but it's most definitely derived from Terega. So I'm not going to take credit for having written that or anything. It's just a group of chords I just pulled out of the air and that I thought sounded kind of nice and adapted to this pattern. So that's number eight. It's really um, that simple. You have a particular picking pattern. Working out that particular group of fingers and that's what these arpeggio studies are all about, is getting really proficient with right hand picking. This is perfect for the finger style ukulele player, somebody who wants to get really good at finger style. I, I highly recommend getting this book. And then um, adding my own chords. So that's where number eight comes from. Let's check out uh, number six and seven, which are totally different. These are nothing like number eight. And that's what's kind of cool about those Terega studies is he gives you a, a big variety of uh, picking patterns. It's not like just slight variations on the same thing. There's some wildly different uh, patterns that uh, give us a lot of practice. All right, so let's get into number six here. Number six is not triplets like I just played. Number six is uh, eighth notes. So it's going to be one and two and three and four and as opposed to the triplets I just played that were one and a two and a three and a four and a. So getting into the groove of number six, we have thumb and middle at the same time, plucking the C and E strings. We have our index finger playing the A string all by itself, and that's all there is to the pattern. It's that simple. It's two events. But what's weird about that is your middle pinches along with your thumb first, and then your index comes and plays the A string. That's backwards to how we normally play. The um, traditional and normal and common way is to pluck with your thumb and index and then have your middle do the A string. So this is not that. It's the opposite. It's so it's working with the same group of fingers. It's not an unusual grouping of fingers, but it's the order that's awkward and a little bit different. So I'll take you some getting used to. What's good about this is it really makes you focus on your right hand and it gives you an incredible amount of control. And that's what we're looking for when we do studies like this. Not only are we trying to get more proficient, but we're working on uh, controlling our fingers, getting finger independence and just having our brain be able to tell our fingers to do anything and they will obey. So that's what this one's all about. It sounds simple. And it kind of is simple but that it's backwards, that it uses um, the order of the fingers in a way that is backwards from what we normally do. That's what makes it unique. So let's go through number six with our chords that we used from the previous example. Different pattern, same chords. straight ahead. Not a whole lot to talk about there. You just got to get used to it. Let's check out number seven, which is a variation of number six. It's not too terribly different, but you know, it's those same eighth notes. It's those same strings, but the fingers are going to change. So number seven is using an even more awkward uh, combination of fingers. It's going to be your thumb and your ring. We hardly ever do that. Pluck these the C and the E strings with our thumb and our ring, but we're going to get training doing that with this one. And then your middle finger catches the A string. So that's very different. You may have never played that in your life. I know I hadn't until I um, came across the Terega book for guitar. So the um, thumb and ring together, the middle separate. That's the whole thing. You might want to practice that on open strings as the exercises, just to get used to it. 
you're ready, apply it to our chord progression, our C minor to G minor to D to G minor chord progression, like this. Might want to go slow at first, just to get used to it. And when you get more confident, speed it up a little bit. After a while it becomes actually natural so these very awkward very unnatural patterns become quite natural when you play them enough and you get into them and then you get real confident with your right hand it, it totally trains your right hand so I hope you enjoyed this ukulele people I hope you get a lot from this book I wrote it with love and I hope that uh, it really helps people out there with their finger style ukulele playing and to get a new appreciation of Terega the great Spanish classical guitar composer and teacher and player who uh, really rocked the world. He changed the whole whole way we play guitar today. Okay, ukulele people, you take care. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, and of course, be sure to click that notify bell. Uh, visit me over on Patreon where you get all kinds of extra content that I do not make available to the public. Um, but there's lots of free stuff also for the public on Patreon, so I'll put a link below so you can click on that and see the wonderful world of Patreon. All right, ukulele people, take care. Bye-bye.